Hello and welcome to another video. Today I am very excited to share with you, I believe, the third installment in my reviews videos. If you're new to the channel or you don't know what the reviews videos are, I don't really do wrap-ups on this channel. Instead, I do reviews videos in which I review all the books I have read since my last reviews video. And with that, we will just get started with the book. The first book I am going to be talking about is P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. And since this is the second book in the duology, I don't really want to spill too much about it. But the first book was about a girl whose letters that she had written to all of her crushes got sent out and she had to kind of deal with that. And this is the second book to that. I was really nervous about this book because I absolutely positively loved the first book and I was nervous that I wasn't going to be able to follow up with that or like catch on to the characters as much as I did with the first one. I actually started reading this book twice because I started it at the beginning of the summer and then school so then I started it again in January and I was able to finish it then with no problems. I absolutely love the characters still and they just popped out and grabbed me like they did with the first book. In this book and the first one, I really, really love the strong sense of family that is present. I feel like the family plays such a crucial part in the story and I really loved getting to know each individual person in the family as well as Laura Jean, our main character. While reading this, I remember making like little sticky notes about like seeing little buds of feminism in the book and I was like, I see you, Jenny Han. I see you, girl. I see you dropping them hints of feminism. And I was just like, yes. This is what needs to be happening in our world right now. All in all, it was a really great book for me and I thought it was cute. It's not the best book I've ever read, but I'm a sucker for things that are cute, make me smile, and have little dashes of feminism in them. I gave it a four out of five stars. The next book I'm going to talk about is Shades of Earth by Beth Revis. This is the third and final book in the Across the Universe trilogy. I was very, very nervous when I picked up this book because I read Across the Universe in 2003. I read A Million Sons in 2004. I picked up this book in 2016, which is two years after having read the second book in the trilogy. So I was just nervous, not even quite sure if I remembered the story, not quite sure what was going to go on. So after reading two really great summaries, thank you the internet, I dove into this book thinking that it was probably going to be a three-star book the whole way through. I probably wasn't going to like it and all that kind of stuff. But boy oh boy was I wrong. One, I can't explain how my feels were hurting. Two, I didn't understand because I had not been connected to these characters for three years. And three, this probably was like one of the biggest fangirl episodes that I've had in a really long time over like characters that I wasn't even quite sure if I was going to love anymore, so it was even worse. This book was mediocre up until the halfway point. I was really annoyed with all the anticipation that was building up throughout the book. I was like, something better happen because this is real boring. And then at the halfway point, I started reading like my heart depended on it and there was like nothing else in the world besides me and this book. And I was, frankly, I was kind of scared of myself because I was like, oh, this is okay. Oh my kind of blew me away in the face and I was like oh just like that it was really good I gave it a 3.5 stars it brought me into the characters and the world in such a wonderful way and I think that if I would have read it back to back after having read the other books I probably would have rated it higher but it was pretty good I recommend this series it was good. The next book I read was Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I have heard eons and eons of wonderful things about this book. I was so excited. I didn't really know what it was about, so I went into it blind and I was like, give me amazingness. Unfortunately, I was not met with amazingness. This book is about a boy named Connor who dreams about a monster every once in a while and then one day the monster shows up and things ensue. I'm not sure if that was a good enough uh, synopsis, but that was the kind of synopsis I went into this book with, so there you go. This book read like a children's book to me, which was kind of frustrating because I absolutely positively love children's books, but I didn't like this one. I really think I just didn't connect with a third person point of view and I just felt really disconnected from the characters. I think the only part of this book that I really enjoyed were the stories that the monster told. Other than that, it just felt really kind of not what I thought it was going to be. So maybe it's my fault that I didn't like it, I don't know. I ended up giving this book a 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was A Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius by David Edgers. Dave Edgers. Words. Last names. 
book. This book is a autobiography that Dave Eggers wrote about his life. And I decided to pick this book up because I was recommended it in high school by one of the librarians that I worked with. And I absolutely had loved everything that she had recommended to me, so I decided to pick this one up. This one just kind of didn't work for me, and I don't know why. That is a lie. I think I do know why, because I picked up this book in January, and I didn't finish it until May. That was both my own fault, because I was in school and I didn't have the time to read, and also I didn't really want to pick it up because it was very wordy, very random, and very just not... 100% something that I wanted to read at the time. I ended up speed reading a lot of it because it just wasn't really what I wanted to be reading at the time and I don't know, it just didn't really fit with me. I ended up giving it a 2.5 stars. It's not something that I would really recommend to people to read. Sorry. The next book I read was The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This also was a recommendation by one of my favorite librarians, and I picked it up because I wanted to read really good adult books, and this was one that she recommended to me. I don't really know how to give a synopsis to this book, so like I'm just going to try. In my perspective, this book is about a guy who goes to a college to study Greek and becomes a part of a group of misfits of people who study Greek and things ensue once again this is one that kind of missed the mark for me also another one that took me from January to June to read so even longer than the other one that might be at fault for the reason why I didn't like it or it might also be the fact that I just wasn't really in tune with the book so when I got to the part where I realized that this was kind of like a misfit boy finds group of misfits doing things that people don't really do I was like oh And that's the kind of anticipation I felt for the whole first part of the book because the book is split into like part one and part two. And the anticipation was awesome and awesome and I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. What's going to happen? And then the second part of the book came and it was just boring. Like watching grass grow boring. And like it was kind of almost really hard for me to read because in the first half there were some parts that had like very bigoted homophobia and like I don't know I'm the kind of person that like yeah there's bigoted homophobia and it's just that character but I just get really frustrated when it's in books in general same as racism and sexism and like all the isms and just all the horrible things that I just don't tolerate like whenever it happens in a book I'm just kind of like <clears throat> So I was kind of like that during the first half and then the second half just didn't give me anything to like remedy that. So I was just kind of like, why? So like I liked it, but like it just wasn't really the best. I ended up giving this book a three out of five stars. The next book I picked up was a little graphic novel called Lost at Sea by Brian Lee O'Malley. And this graphic novel was about a girl who doesn't have a soul but thinks that she can find her soul in the heart of a cat. And there's also a road trip in there, so yeah, I'm good at synopsises. I don't even really know how to describe this book except for the fact that it made me really happy and it was short and it was sweet and I liked it. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I want to talk about is Sisterhood Everlasting, which is the fifth and last book in the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series. I almost said trilogy. And I've been reading these books for a while. I tried to like stay intact with like the girls growing up so then I was the same age as the girls were. But then they jumped to like when they were 30 so I couldn't really do that and I was not about to wait like 15 years to read the last book. This was a great book. I liked it. I cried because things happen that I didn't think were gonna happen in this book and oh, feelings weren't all over the place. Like, oh my gosh. I'm actually kind of really sad to say goodbye to these girls because I felt like I kind of grew up with them in like the three years that I was writing the book. So yeah, it's kind of sad to say goodbye to them. But I have found out that they are making a Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 3 movie and like all the girls are like in their 30s now. So it's like perfect. The actors are in their 30s and the girls in this book were in their 30s. So oh, I'm 
excited. I ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it, and I'm sad to say goodbye to the girls. Then I read Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which I am very proud to say is the first book that I had finished in my Harry Potter Challenge 2K16. <laughs> I think that this was probably the most enjoyable book that I've read thus far in this series. Besides the first one, I really liked the first one. I just didn't really like the second one that much. I think one of the big things that helped me read this and enjoy it more was the fact that I listened to the majority of it on audiobook. So yeah, that helped and it's much easier for me to listen to someone read this story than for me to read it because I think that I just get distracted when I read it by myself. It was a good experience. I think that I am enjoying Harry Potter a lot more now, and I am enjoying the books that I am currently reading of it. So yeah, it was good. I give 3.75 out of 5 stars. And that is it for this reviews video. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books and what you think about them. I hope you are having a wonderful booktastic day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!